Welcome back to our Debakey CV Education YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Diana Hushvetova, and I would like to show you our implementation of transcranial Doppler monitoring during thoracic branch endoprothesis implantation. The patient is a 49-year-old male who was admitted for an elective TVAR to manage a type B asymptomatic descending thoracic aneurysm at the site of a previous coarctation repair. Taking into consideration his positive family history of dissecting aortic aneurysm and abdominal aortic aneurysm, it was decided that he would undergo endovascular repair. CT angiogram of the chest with contrast showed a descending thoracic aneurysm measuring 5.2 cm in width and 5.8 cm in length. Scattered calcification of the aneurysm sac could be potential source of embolization during the TVAR. You can see a 3D reconstruction of the CT on the right. TCD is the only intraoperative monitoring method that provides real-time information about the extent of embolization into the brain from the aortic arch during endovascular procedures. High-intensity transient signals or HITs suggest air and particulate emboli flowing through the monitored vessels. By counting the hits, we receive feedback about the quality of stent graft de-airing before endovascular insertion, contrast agent de-airing before angiograms, and the amount of embolization during the contact of interventional devices with aorta. For intraoperative TCD monitoring, we use a head frame to hold the TCD probes in a steady position. Through the left temporal bone window, we insonate the left middle cerebral artery, or MCA, to detect emboli flowing through the left common and internal carotid arteries. Furthermore, a drop in the left MCA blood flow after deploying the proximal aortic extension cuff could indicate unintentional coverage of the left common carotid artery orifice. Through the right temporal bone window, we monitor the P2 segment of the right posterior cerebral artery. The idea behind monitoring the P2PCA is that the right and the left vertebral arteries merge into the basilar artery, which then divides into the right and the left posterior cerebral arteries. This allows us to detect emboli flowing through the left subclavian and vertebral arteries when inserting and deploying the left subclavian side branch stand graft. A drop in the right P2PCA blood flow could indicate unintentional coverage of the left vertebral orifice even before performing a fluoroscopy guided angiogram. Let's take a moment to review the TCD screen. The blood in the P2 segment of the PCA flows away from the probe. This is why the M mode signal appears blue. The blood in the MCA flows towards the probe, making the M mode signal red. We monitor the mean flow velocities, the pulsatility index or PI values, which are an indirect indicator of vasoconstriction and vasodilation in the brain, the delta percentage, which indicates the percentage change of the current mean flow velocity compared to the baseline, and the number of emboli. At our institution, we use the quad setting on Carlstor's IDA to record our cases. This setting allows us to record the fluoroscopy guided angiography simultaneously with any imaging modality, such as the CT angiogram with contrast, the 3D reconstruction of the CT image, but it can be the intravascular ultrasound or regular ultrasound as well, the transcranial Doppler or TCD screen, and the vital functions. The image fusion markers you can see on the fluoroscopy guided angiography indicate the orifice of the left common carotid artery the distal edge of the common carotid artery orifice, the left subclavian artery orifice, and the distal end of the aneurysm. A soft glide wire is being introduced into the ascending arch through the burnt catheter and exchanged for a curved Landerquist wire. No hits were seen on the TCD screen during this phase. The next step is delivering the pigtail catheter. Take a look at the TCD screen as some hits will be seen in the left middle cerebral artery. The first angiogram delineating the arch anatomy caused multiple hits bilaterally seen in the left middle cerebral artery and the right posterior cerebral artery. The introduction of the first device, which is the distal extension gore stand graft measuring 31 by 31 by 100 millimeters, caused one hit in the right posterior cerebral artery. 
Numerous hits are seen during the deployment of the distal extension stand graft. We presume that these hits are caused by air bubbles. The stand graft is being deployed in two steps and hits are seen during both. The likelihood of the stand graft contacting the arterial wall and releasing plaque during the intermediate deployment is low, yet hits are seen. This is the intermediate deployment and hits are seen mainly in the left middle cerebral artery. The TCD machine is meanwhile reminding us to adhere to the ALARA principles, which emphasize minimizing the ultrasound exposure to as low as reasonably achievable levels. The second wave of hits arrives during the full deployment of the stand graft, and here we can see hits bilaterally. A soft glide wire was directed from the left radial axis through the left subclavian artery into the distal stand graft. This phase caused no hits on the TCD screen. From the right groin axis, an ensnared device was delivered to snare the wire from the left radial axis down through the right femoral axis. The second device was the thoracic branch endoprothesis measuring 31 by 15 mm with an 8 mm portal. Right positioning of this device is extremely important. The device is advanced over the preloaded wire from the left radial axis to guide and position the portal at the left subclavian artery orifice. Some hits are seen bilaterally on the TCD screen from positioning the thoracic branch endoprothesis. The pre-deployment angiogram before deploying the TBE shows proper alignment of the portal with the left subclavian artery orifice. On the TCD screen, we can see brightening in the M mode and the waveform in the left middle cerebral artery. The deployment of the TBE is causing bilateral hits in the left middle cerebral artery and the right posterior cerebral artery. Otherwise, no significant blood flow changes are seen on the TCD screen during the deployment of the TBE. A 6 French sheet was introduced from the left radial axis through the TBE portal into the descending aorta. No hits were seen in the right PCA during this phase. The 15 mm subclavian side branch stand graft was delivered through the groin, buttressed distally against the 6 French sheet for support, and advanced through the TBE portal into its right position. And once again, during this case, no hits are seen in the right posterior cerebral artery during endovascular surgical manipulation of interventional devices in the left subclavian artery. Selective angiogram of the left subclavian artery was performed before the deployment of the side branch stand graft to visualize the orifice of the left vertebral artery. Hits are seen only in the right PCA, which is proof that we were indeed monitoring the right posterior cerebral artery. Now the deployment of the left subclavian side branch stand graft is causing some hits in the right posterior cerebral artery. No significant change in the blood flow was seen, which means that the left vertebral artery was not covered. However, if we take a look at the time scale, we can see some slight elevation in the PI values bilaterally during the deployment of the left subclavian side branch stand graft. Post dilation of the side branch is next. These two dark spots represent the balloon. We are looking for mean flow velocity and PI value changes during the ballooning. Three hits were seen in the right posterior cerebral artery during the ballooning. Otherwise, no significant changes in the blood flow were seen. As you can see in the time scale, only slight changes of the PI values and mean flow velocity were observed. The introduction of the proximal aortic extension cuff measuring 31 by 40 mm caused a macroembolus in the left middle cerebral artery. This is a macroembolus, as in the waveform we can see one single embolus, but in the M mode we can see this wide, white, disruption of the M-mode signal, which is significantly forward slash shaped, which means that this embolus is traveling slowly, and also there is shadowing after this dis disruption. The deployment of the proximal aortic extension cuff is causing bilateral shower of emboli in the left middle cerebral artery as well as in the right posterior cerebral artery. The shower of emboli, which presumably originates from the air trapped in the stent graft, arrives into the left MCA first, the right PCA second. 
This delay might be caused by the configuration of the TBE portal antiparallel with the direction of blood flow. Completion angiogram showed no obstruction of the blood flow into the head vessels, good seal and no endoleak. We observed a mild total amount of hits during the procedure on TCD. It is important to emphasize that most of these hits were air emboli from endograft deployments. Air is expected to be absorbed by the body. The patient showed no neurologic deficit post-procedure and was discharged home on postoperative day one asymptomatic, neurologically intact. At two months follow-up, the patient remained neurologically intact, asymptomatic, with patent left subclavian stent, patent left common carotid artery and innominate artery, no endoleak, stable descending thoracic aneurysm size, and all excess sites stable. For more videos about vascular ultrasound and the implementation of transcranial Doppler monitoring during cardiovascular procedures, subscribe to the Debakey Cardiovascular Education YouTube channel.